I lead the growth analytics team here at Just Eat, and um, what we do is basically work with growth marketing and growth product teams to understand and drive acquisition, activation, and retention in our customer base. That's our new mission that I created just for this chat, but hopefully it's going to stick. Um, and the way I like to work is to ask three different questions that, in my opinion, are quite crucial to um, add value, to make sure that our work always adds value, and at the same time that our roadmap is always going in the right direction. So without further ado, the three questions. Why does it matter? <laughs> What's the estimated KPI contribution? And should we do this versus everything else? So let's start with the first one. Uh, why does it matter? This seems like such an easy question to answer, but it's really, really, really difficult. Um, now, if everyone worked together, uh, ideated together, always thought of the KPIs, the goals, this would be superfluous. On the other hand, the reality is not really like that, especially in a company as big as Just Eat, where things get cascaded down and um, we, <laughs> No pressure. <laughs> uh, things get cascaded down and ultimately people end up working on their own little work streams. Um, I'm assuming that some of you have the same issue. I don't want to call it a problem because sometimes it can be good. But anyway, um, our job as analysts is to ensure that everyone is on the right track and is going towards the right direction um, to align with the KPI goals. But <laughs> we're not the KPI police, meaning that we're not monitoring everyone's work, especially not the 3,000 employees at Just Eat. Um, but this is a very data-driven organization. So ultimately, or hopefully at the very beginning, people will come to us um, and ask questions about data. So this is our perfect opportunity to usher people into the right direction. Um, so before I joined Just Eat, I worked at Spotify, and I was the only analyst for about 35 stakeholders, working with maybe 10 different work streams. So clearly, I had to get creative in how I prioritized and how I made sure that everyone was doing valuable work. The company had three key KPIs. And what I would do every week when I met with my stakeholders and with my team was ask them questions to make sure that their work or their new projects were uh, going to contribute to one of these three KPIs. So naturally, the first thing that I did when I joined Just Eat, apart from say hello, um, <laughs> was to implement a similar system for briefing and prioritization. Um, this was a relatively long form um, with a bunch of questions. Um, but this would force people to think about why they were asking the questions or the uh, why they were submitting a request. Now, going into uh, submitting a request with a bunch of questions, it's much more difficult than going to someone and saying, hey, can you do this for me? Um, or, hey, like, here's an email. Can you pull this for me? Can you analyze this? Um, and this was a natural barrier because it ensured that people were only asking relevant and important questions that contributed to the KPI goals. So some of you might um, have memories of this form. Um, <laughs> So here I would ask people to describe their request, and especially what's the business case? Um, what question does this answer? What KPI is this going to affect? And again, like I kept this quite limited because I didn't want people to just invent KPIs. Um, can you estimate the final impact of your request on KPIs? Remember this question, please. Does it impact customers? We're very, very customer focused here. Um, if it doesn't impact customers, most likely there's no need to do this. Um, is it a dependency? Does it unblock other workflows? Where is it coming from? In other words, who is, it going to be who is going to be upset if we don't do this? And I have to be honest, I stole this question from someone else. Um, where does it reach? What happens if we don't do it? And ultimately, where is the MVP? Meaning, do you really need a whole dashboard? Do you really need a deep dive? Or can we do this in something small and quick um, that we can deliver quickly? Um, so yeah, so, oh, sorry. Um, so another benefit of the system was that seeing all of the open um, requests, because this would go into a backlog that we would prioritize objectively with our stakeholders, this brought some peace into the world, or maybe into our team um, and our stakeholders, because they could see very clearly um, why their work wasn't prioritized um, when there was something more important. We don't use the system anymore per se, and if you're curious to know, please ask me later why I deprecated it. Um, but we still ask these questions in our minds, and our stakeholders also ask these questions all the time. 
which means that it was a success. Um, yeah. So the next question is actually my favorite one. What is the estimated KPI contribution? I'm going to nerd out on finance a little bit because before I joined the wonderful world of tech, I was a financial analyst. I analyzed stocks for a living. Um, I'm assuming that some of you know about the stock market, invest in the stock market. Uh, but basically, in the stock market, when you're investing in stocks, the only thing that matters in 99% of the cases is profit maximization. This is your KPI most of the time. And there are several ways of doing this, of achieving the goal. But I like value investing. And value investing means um, that you're looking at a stock and you're seeing whether it's worth more or less than its current market price. Um, yeah, this sounds very easy, but it's really difficult because you need to estimate the value, right? How do you do that? Um, well, it's actually quite standardized in the, in the financial industry. It's more standardized than tech, um, obviously. <laughs> so the first thing you would do is take all of the available information to build a financial model. And this financial model will have public information such as financial statements, um, earnings calls, um, news, everything that you have available at your disposal, but you would also do some sort of estimates, right? You don't know what the tax rate is going to be. You don't know what the discount rate, the perpetual growth rate. These are all estimates um, to fill in the blanks, to ultimately estimate how much the company is worth and therefore the share price. And then you compare this share price based on what your model says to uh, the current market price. And then you make a decision on whether it's worth more or less and you buy, sell, or hold. Well, guys, let me tell you something. It is the same thing in tech. Um, I've been applying the same principles to my t in my tech career. Um, if you don't do an opportunity assessment or a business case on one of your uh, projects or ideas, it's basically a gamble. It's massive risk. Um, how do you know that it's worth the effort? Your time is the most important thing. Um, so at Just Aid, we work really collaboratively, um, first on ideation and then on translating all of the different ideas into numbers and what the opportunity might look like in terms of KPIs. So we do this by um, adding a baseline or funnel data that you already know, that you already have, um, trying to project what your organic baseline growth is going to be over the next 12 months. So if you didn't do this initiative, what will your growth be like? And then ultimately fill in the blanks with growth assumptions. And here's a little example that I like. Um, we don't send an abandoned basket email here at Just Eat. But some people, some very clever people, had the idea of sending this email. Now, what I did was take how many sessions we have every month, or actually in the first month only, um, project my baseline growth, and then take how many of them can we identify? How many of them um, have created the basket? How many of them have abandoned the basket? And this is our opportunity. But on the other hand, we also need to, opt to make sure that they're opted into marketing, because otherwise, how are we going to message them? I mean, we can, but it's probably not the best idea, right? GDPR. Um, <laughs> so this would mean that these are the maximum messages that we can send. And then we have to create some sort of conversion rate assumption. I don't know. We haven't done this before. I have to estimate it somehow. And then ultimately, I see that my annualized um, incremental order number is 50,000. By the way, these are all fake numbers because I don't think I'm allowed to share real numbers, but the principle applies and the methodology was exactly what I did. Um, most people get stuck at the assumption stage. Um, just a quick show of hands. How many of you recognize this meme? Oh, guys, come on. It's Mean Girls. Um, <laughs> oh, I like them. Anyway. Uh, awkwardness aside, um, digital is a really new place, right? So we don't have as many templates. We don't have as many benchmarks. We need to get really creative. So the word fudgy, I don't think the word fudgy really exists, but I decided, or it doesn't exist in this case, but I decided to call my talk fudgy because working with, working with assumptions data reminds me of fudge. It's all malleable and like f fudgy. Anyway, <laughs> so you know what? Um, if you're doing this abandoned basket email and you don't know what your conversion rate is going to be like, maybe ask your email provider. Um, if you're doing a brand new landing page to improve conversion rate and you don't know what it's going to look like, ask your industry friends or anyone here in this room um, to have some sort of a benchmark. If you're going to implement vouchers in your service for the very first time, 
you know what, like Google it. There's so much information available. And in the worst case scenario, you can do an MVP experiment. <laughs> Um, but that's a whole different chat, and that's something that Henry here will talk about later. Um, so now that you have your estimate, should we do this versus everything else? Uh, I don't know about you guys, but we have so many ideas here at Just Eat, and we want to do everything, but you can't. Because, for example, in the stock market, you don't have all the money in the world to invest. Well, I mean, some people do, right? Uh, <laughs> the point is that you want to maximize your, your investment um, you want to maximize return, and you also want to minimize risk with your money. It was the same thing in tech, right? Um, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's up to you if you want to invest your time and your resource in one thing or diversify in several different areas. It's totally up to you and your company and how much resource you have. But the principle is that you need to implement some sort of a framework that's objective to prioritize. Um, before I came to London, I worked in Israel in several different startups, um, and they were much hackier than companies here in London, I would say. And our prioritization system was very um, easy. It was P0 to P3. Priority 0 was critical. Priority 3 was basically, it would never get done. Uh, <laughs> most of my projects were P3. <laughs> I'm teasing, not always. Um, but this was very, very subjective, right? Like, I think it's P2, you think it's P1. Since then, um, I think I've come to adopt a more robust um, prioritization system. The one I like to use, and there are many, 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 um, is ICE, because it's quite simple. ICE stands for impact, cost, and effort. And the way you interpret these three variables is totally up to you. The way I like to do it is to say impact, is your KPI um, projection. So for example, in the case of Just Eat, it's incremental orders, and you can use the number that you did um, in step two, right? So 50,000 orders versus 100,000 orders and so on. Confidence, I like to interpret this as how confident are you in your assumptions? Just because you did the work before, but how confident are you really in your assumptions? And the third one, which is ease, I like to use, and I like to think about um, how many engineering days does it take to develop and test. Now you give each of these um, some sort of a number. Um, it can be anything you want, but ultimately you add or average the three. Um, and this gives you a good idea of which one should be going first. The beauty of this is that you can customize it and personalize it. I'm impressed that I use the word personalization because um, it keeps popping up everywhere. Um, <laughs> You can add any custom variable you want. So for example, at Spotify, because I had so many different stakeholders and so many different work streams, one of my criteria was, can I internationalize this or can I adopt it for other work streams? Um, and here at Just Eat, because we're so customer centric, <coughs> does it impact the customer, yes or no? Or we have a new um, data platform, it's called Data 2.0 and we're very creative. Uh, oops, <laughs> shouldn't have said that. Um, so can we build this on data 2.0, yes or no? And this will give you higher points. Another amazing thing that you can do is assign a higher weighting value, right? So if something is even is the most important thing, um, you would assign maybe double the points, triple the points, whatever. You can really play with it, but the bottom, the bottom line is create some sort of a framework that works for you and your business. Because ultimately, this is going to convert your decision-making process into a data-driven one. And even better, every company has a hippo. Who doesn't know what hippo means? <laughs> <laughs> it means highest uh, paid person's opinion. Um, and you just want to make everything data driven. Um, if your company is extremely intuitive based or if your company, not just deep, um, it goes by what the hippo says, uh, you can always use forecasting and you can always use objective prioritization to fight back. So in summary, um, I like to ask these three questions. Why does it matter? So you only work on things that contribute to the KPI goals. You implement a briefing system that promotes critical thinking. Um, and the second question, what's the estimated KPI contribution? So that you continuously look for high ROI activities um, and you develop assumptions to potentially forecast KPI contribution. Lastly, should we do this versus everything else? 
You allocate your resources to maximize ROI and minimize risk. You choose an objective prioritization system that works for your company. And lastly, you add some custom variables and personalize it in a way that suits you. Um.